Hey folks, it's Billy DKY, the truth seeker that simplifies and demystifies. This is going to be my Tao Te Ching review, chapter one, and basically this is the book that I'm getting it from. It's uh, Tao Te Ching, the, the T is pronounced uh, D, and Lao Tzu, some, some places you'll see T-S-U, T-Z-U, and you definitely, if you're going to get one, you want to get this translation by Guy Fu Fing and Jane English. The introduction, I don't, I, I personally don't recommend reading the introduction much. I, I would even read it and, I've read it, but it didn't mean nothing. You know, these philosophers, they never really get it, so. Here's chapter one. That's how short it is, chapter one, I like that. And basically, before I get started, basically the Tao Te Ching, in my opinion, is probably one of the best books ever written. Hopefully, my uh, Fall Away Growth, I think, is better because, uh, basically, I'm bringing it more, trying to create ladders of understanding so that people can follow it. And um, if you look at my path blog, it's a lot like this book. I try to keep things short and simple and to the point. Um, I will put a link to the to this book on uh, Amazon in the information section, which I think is down now. So anyway, let's just start. First, I'm going to read it and then just sort of talk about it. Chapter 1. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The name is the mother of ten thousand things. Ever desireless, one can see the mystery. Ever desiring, one can see the manifestations. These two spring from the same source but differ in name. This appears as darkness. Darkness within darkness, the gate to all mystery. And I don't know if I can... I'm not going to put this in the information section because it may be copyright infringement. So, um, okay, so let's start off again. Let's look at the first sentence. The Tao, or actually a collection of sentences. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The name is the mother of 10,000 things. So, when he's talking about names, basically he's just getting at, hey, the label is not what's important. It's the experience, the actually experiencing reality for yourself. Like if I go say, if I say flower right now to you, or if I say rose to you right now, what does that mean? What, what's happening? You're thinking rose, you're, you're, you're seeing a mental picture in your mind of a rose, but that's not the same thing as experiencing it firsthand, actually touching it, smelling it, experiencing it. And even, even if you're a scientist, you're looking at a microscope, it's, you know, it's, it's not the same as talking about it. So don't get caught up in the words and get caught up more in the experience. So he's saying get away, you know, don't get, a lot of people think that um, they're not experiencing life, they're not touching it, they're not feeling it, they're not using their senses, their five senses or six senses if you want to say your consciousness where your spirit, and they just cling to words or, or images, some stale image in their mind, so get away from that. That's all, that's my take on it, you may have a little bit different, but I think that's pretty good. Next line, ever desireless, one can see the mystery. Ever desiring, one sees the manifest. Oh, I'm going to go back on the first four sentences. He says the name is the mother of 10,000 things. When he says 10,000 things, that's the label you give to everything. This is some kind of a paperweight. This is a mouse. This is a stopwatch. This is a computer. You're watching a video. I mean, it's just pen. You know, it's just mind-boggling how many names there really are things. So that's what he means with this 10,000 things. Again, the next two sentences. Ever desireless, one can see the mystery. Ever desiring, one sees the manifestations. So when your mind is not filled with desire, you're seeing, you're not really seeing the essence, but you're perceiving that you're starting to feel the essence and you're not looking, like, like if I'm looking at a woman and I'm full of desire, or if I'm free of desire, I'm seeing an energy flow. Like I said, everything's energy. Yeah, I see energy flow, but if I'm, if I'm thinking about sex and wanting and filled with desire, I'm seeing... I'm seeing a sex object, so that's that's the whole point about that. Or if you're looking at a Ferrari, you know, like let's say you're looking at a Ferrari and you're filled with desire, you're thinking, yeah, something make me happy, blah, 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 yeah, I want that, what I have to do to get it, who I have to kill, what money I have to make. But if you're not looking with desire, if you're looking at, when I look at somebody in a fancy car now, you know what I think? I think, damn, that's a lot of wasted money, they had to, they're going to have to work hard to to pay the bills on it. I see all the burden. I don't see 
I mean, don't get me wrong, I can see some masterful craftsmanship and stuff like that, but I don't see it as something I want. I see it more as a burden now, unless I actually need to get to point A to point B, and I need to use it as a car, but I think you get the point. Next sentence, these two spring from the same source, but different name. This appears as darkness, and I don't know, like I say, it's, if you look at a woman and you want to have sex, you see her as a sex object. If you don't, you see her as an energy flow, you know, you see what she really is. Uh, he says, this appears as darkness. I'm not really... These two spring from the same source, but different name. Uh, this appears as darkness. I'm not 100% sure what he means. This appears as darkness. Darkness within darkness, the gate to all mystery. Um, I don't really get the last three lines. Really, I mean, the only thing I can see is when you're seeing things for what it, what it really is, it can be depressing to your ego for a while. So, anyway, I, like I say, I'm wanting to go through this and do a another review of it for myself and I figured I might as well do videos on it while I'm doing it and uh, maybe expose some of you to the Tao Te Ching and if you do read the book again it is very simple to the point and when I first read the Tao Te Ching somebody had told me it's it is one of the best books and I got it and I couldn't understand it because it was too simple and I just said you know what somebody told me it's good I'll be open minded I put it on my bookshelf I went to the other book that I had 8 Mindful Steps to Happiness and only after I'd made progress with the eight mindful steps to happiness, then all of a sudden I was walking along one day and I said, oh, that's what Lao Tzu said. So it gave me a lot of credence to what Lao Tzu said. And so I came back and read the whole thing with enthusiasm because because um, I knew he knew what he's talking about. I was just too stupid to get it. I was too complicated to get what he was saying. Or, or more precisely, I was too stupid to get it. So... Um, don't underestimate this book. In my opinion, this is a book you can you can keep with you your whole life and read. Again, get this translation uh, by Guy... I'll put it up a little closer. Translated by Guy Fu Fing and Jane English. And it looks like... say It'll look like that. They may have an anniversary edition or something like that. But, uh, excellent book. And, like I say, you read the whole thing. It'll take you... It'll take your whole life, really, to get all this. And that's if you... You know, you truly follow the spiritual path. Now, thank you. I think those of you who really want to seek the truth, uh, I think you'll really enjoy this series. And let's see what else. And like I said, I'll give you some perspective on it, so maybe you'll uh, you'll find it more intriguing and want to uh, apply and learn more of it. Anyway, and until the next video, uh, and again, the link to this book on Amazon will be the first link, and then my path blog will be the second link, and then following the way of growth will be the third link. Basically, like I said, my, I started out trying to write my book like this, and then I realized it's really, uh, I mean, this is good about finding the essence of truth, the Tao Te Ching. However, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily start a spiritual revolution by, because a lot of times I get it at the highest level, but then I have to, buy, I need to create ladders of understanding so people can understand where I'm getting at. Because I had this experience once at work. This girl was desperate to get married, and she ran off with this guy. And they made it halfway across the country, and she finally realized she made a mistake, and, and she turned back home, and everybody's like, I don't know what happened. I said, well, she was desperate to get married, and they like, oh, no, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. And some girl that's really intuitive there, one of the secretaries, she goes, that's exactly what, and she did all the steps that I went to, because I got it in a flash like that, but everybody else couldn't, and she created ladders of understanding where nobody, after she said what she said, nobody disagreed with what I was saying, so really falling away of growth is about creating those ladders of uh, understanding so people can get what I'm saying so they can carry it on and use it and, and spread it and whatnot. So anyway, until the next video, later folks.